Hi everyone, this is Michael Tua, and today I want to share with you one of my favorite one pot dishes pork with apricots, olives, and capers. I love one pot or one tray cooking because it's so easy to put together, and at the end, there's very minimal cleanup. So, what's not to like, right? And this pork with apricots, olives, and capers, I know it's a mouthful to say, is my current favorite. It's actually inspired by another recipe that uses prunes instead of apricots, which I really love, but it feels a little autumnal. And I suppose my version here is a springtime take on that recipe, both in appearance and in flavors. Uh, there's a bright orange yellow apricots, and then the green olives, and I love the zing from uh, the capers and Dijon mustard here. I'm actually starting the stew a day ahead because I want to marinate the pork overnight. And there's only a handful of ingredients here, so let's get started. The cut of pork that I'm using for this stew, it's pork shoulder. And it's often the cut that's used for making pulled pork. So you know after low and slow cooking, this uh, cubes of meat will be so meltingly tender. And I cut the pork into quite generous thick slices because they will shrink a little bit in the cooking and also if the fat part is really thick you can trim it but actually I quite like little pieces of fat going around I'm not scared of fat I mean it will add a lot of flavor so I mean if you don't mind a little bit of fat in the meat leave it because it's gonna be so good now I'm ready to add all the flavorings I'm going to start with the apricots. This is 150 grams of dried apricots. I've just cut it in half. And then 75 grams of green olives. Uh, make sure the olives. For me, when having stew, I, read, I prefer to have pitted olives because you don't want to be you know, taking out stones as you eat the stew. And then 50 grams of capers. This will add a lovely zing. Uh, a tablespoon of oregano, or oregano a la America. Uh, six cloves of garlic. I'm leaving the garlic cloves whole like this. You don't have to uh, peel it, chop it or anything, just leave it whole and because uh, they're whole, you won't get uh, the acrid taste of garlic. After low and slow cooking, they will become so mellow and so sweet. And then I want a heaping tablespoon of Dijon mustard, uh, about two teaspoons of sea salt flakes and half a teaspoon of uh, ground black pepper. If you are using fine sea salt, just use a teaspoon to start with. And the last ingredient is white wine, 250 ml, about a cup here. Uh, use any white wine that you like to drink, but I personally prefer uh, a dry white wine rather than a sweet one. You know, the white wine will actually uh, plant up the dried apricots as well in overnight. And the last thing that you have to do is just stir this around so that everything gets mixed nicely. So cover the pork with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight and my work today is done. We are now ready to cook the pork and what I've done so far is uh, in this pot I've cooked an onion, a medium sized onion, just roughly chopped, uh, cooked in a little bit of olive oil, just um, regular, oil, or regular olive oil, not extra virgin, and just cook it until it's uh, nicely soft and translucent. And then I'm going to add the pork mixture, which I've taken out from the fridge, 
for about an hour and just let it sit in the counter so that it's not too too cold. I'm gonna add the pulp mixture into the onion uh, carefully. And then the last ingredients going in is about a cup of 250 ml of chicken stock. If you have homemade chicken stocks, consolations, good for you, use that. I don't, I just use, you know, my chicken stock comes from a tube um, and it's totally fine. Use that as well. When this mixture comes to a gentle bubble, I'm going to clamp on the lid and then put everything in the oven. I preheated my oven about uh, 170 Celsius or 340 Fahrenheit and put it in the oven and let it cook for two hours. So after a couple of hours, we are ready to eat. Well, I'm ready to eat. Uh, what I would suggest though, check for seasoning. I don't think you're gonna need to add salt um, because uh, the olives is salty and uh, you had the chicken stock as well. Uh, but I did add a bit of black pepper because I do like a bit more spice. And you could serve this stew with anything you like from boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, rice. But if you don't wanna cook additional things, you could just drain a couple of cans of cannellini beans or chickpeas, just add it to the stew and call it a day. But I am mad for noodles, so I am having mine with fettuccine. Um, fettuccine and then, yeah, that's it. And then I just sprinkled, this is totally optional, uh, just because I have them in the fridge, a little bit of fresh parsley to add a little note of, you know, grassy freshness. But please, if you don't have fresh parsley, do not go out and get parsley to the store. Stay home. And then, um, yeah, I'm ready to eat. I'm gonna give this a go. I've actually already tried it, so... Mm. Guys, I must say, okay, stew might not be the best looking dish in the world, but it's all in the taste. The pork here is so meltingly tender. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit salty, a little bit sour. The olives, oh, so good. Well, I hope you give this a go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time, this is Michael Tiller. Bye.